Hello everyone. I watched a video just the other day. Uh, okay, it was a, a video of a uh, presentation by James Randi. Uh, those are always good for a laugh. Uh, in it, he tells a little story about how he... Uh, he selected a person in the audience and asked for a random four-digit number. The number he got back was one, two, three, four. Now, he didn't think that was terribly random, so he basically asked for, well, well, you know, you any four-digit number will do. And he got four, three, two, one. Then he said, but no, no, give me a random four-digit number. And apparently this person said, eventually, I don't know any random numbers. And then he said he had to give her the win on that one because, you know, you really don't know random numbers. People aren't good at choosing random numbers. Now, he's right. We aren't. Or more precisely, we aren't good at randomly choosing numbers. But there is a slight problem with his assertion. Now, while humans are very bad at randomly selecting numbers, uh, we tend not to be very random at all. And what we think of as random really isn't. So while that is the case, asserting that 1, 2, 3, 4 is not a random number is a bit disingenuous. You don't know how I arrived at 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, let's take a look at four-digit numbers. There are 9,000 possible four-digit numbers. What, 9,000, you say? Don't you mean 10,000? No, think about it. There are nine possibilities for the first digit because you cannot have a four-digit number if the first digit is zero. By convention, leading zeros don't count when you're counting the number of digits in a number. So, well, unless it's the number zero, in which case it's a one-digit number. So, you've only got nine possibilities for that first digit, but there are ten possibilities for the re remaining three. So that's... 10 times 10 times 10 times 9. That's 9,000. So there's 9,000 four-digit numbers. That means the chance of picking one purely at random is 1 in 9,000. That means there's a 1 in 9,000 chance that a random selection of four-digit numbers will give you one, two, three, four. But there's the same one in 9,000 chance of getting four, three, two, one, or 1,000, or eight, four, seven, one, or nine, 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 nine. These all have exactly the same probability if you have a purely, truly random selection algorithm of some kind. So that means that 1, 2, 3, 4 might very well be a random number. You don't know that. So just because you asked for a number from somebody, it doesn't mean that the number is not random. For instance, I may have may carry around a list of numbers that were generated randomly, and every time someone asks me for a four-digit number, I look at my list, I take the top one on the list, I give it to them, and I cross it off. Then, the next time someone asks for a four-digit number, I look at my list, I take the next one on the list, and then I cross it off. In that case, I would be giving actual random numbers. So it's a, 
not likely, but it's at least possible that this person in Mr. Randy's audience really did give a random number. Now, we know from the rest of the anecdote that this person did not do use something like this, but the implication that 1234 was not a random number assumes facts that weren't in evidence at the time. It doesn't sound like it would be a random number, though, because the digits are in ascending order. But what would a random number look like? Well, maybe it's uh, 7, 4, 8, 1. Maybe that's a random number. All the digits are different. Maybe that makes it random. Okay. But 4242 two, two wouldn't be a random number. No, because it's the same two-digit number repeated. So that's not random, right? Well, wrong. It depends how you arrive at your number, whether it's random or not. Now, if, you, if I gave you a page with a bunch of dots on it, And they were all clumpy, so you had some areas where there was a bunch of dots clumped together, and you had other areas where there was relatively few. You would think that didn't look particularly random. Or at least most people would seem to think that at first glance. Yet, if I gave you a sheet with all the dots uniformly distributed, a lot of people would actually think that was random. But in actual fact, it's the other way around. The uniformly distributed dots are not random. There's a definite pattern to them. Whereas that clumpy distribution, that is almost certainly at least more random. Now, here's the kicker. It is at least vanishingly like a small probability, but it is at least possible that you run a truly random process and you and end up with that uniform distribution. As a matter of fact, that one uniform distribution is exactly as likely as any other arrangement with clumpiness in it there would be exactly one of those even distributions though and say you've got 10 million dots well there'd be one in 10 million chance of getting that perfectly even uh, uniform distribution but every other distribution will not be perfectly uniform which means it's far more likely that your random arrangement is going to be clumpy than uniform. So when you're looking at uh, data and you've got a nice uniform result, odds are pretty good it's not random. It is not impossible that a random process would create it. It's just hugely unlikely. Okay, so we know a little bit about randomness. So in that four digit number situation, suppose I ask for a random number and the person that's giving it to me has access to a true random number generator. And then they give me the number 1,000. Well, it doesn't seem random to me. That's the lowest four-digit number. But it is because I've already established the person giving me the number has used a true random number generator. There's a 1 in 9,000 chance that that random number generator is going to spit out 1,000. 
but I don't like 1,000 for some reason, so I ask for another one. So this person consults their random number generator. The number that comes out is 1,000 again. Wait a minute. That can't be right. That can't be random. You can't. Two identical numbers in a row isn't random. Well, wrong. It, there was a 1 in 9,000 chance that the first one would be 1,000. But there's still a 1 in 9,000 chance the next one will be 1,000. That said, the chance of two 1,000s in a row is 1 in 81 million. So it's not likely, but it is possible. Now, I still don't like a thousand, so I ask for another one. A guy consults his random number generator and pulls out one thousand again. Again, that's not impossible. It's just each time you get another one thousand in a row, the likelihood of that sequence gets lower and lower. But the likelihood that the next number you get is a thousand is always one in nine thousand. Always. Okay, so now I'm not convinced that this guy has a real random number generator because it's so unlikely to get the three one thousands in a row. So I'll ask for a fourth one in this time. I'm doing it because I want to be sure that he's not just giving me a thousand every time. So I ask for a fourth one, and I get 7781. And I go, okay, so he's not just giving me a thousand every time. 7781. Okay, well, that doesn't seem random either. And yeah, and that pretty much goes to humans are not good at identifying randomness. We're built to find patterns in things. Uh, it's a survival trait, is we're always looking for patterns in what we're, we're seeing and things like that. Uh, familiar things, uh, things that might be coming to uh, eat us or something like that. So we're looking for patterns and we're well adapted to see patterns in things. And as a result, we tend not to see randomness when the randomness is really there. And that's important to keep in mind when you're doing anything that requires randomness. Uh, a random password is not really random if you create it just by banging on a keyboard. Because what you're banging, you're not going to hit every key on the keyboard equally likely. But that level of ran randomness might be sufficient for your password. And you have to consider degrees of randomness. So, like for instance, for a game, you're looking for unpredictability. It doesn't necessarily have to be purely random. And random number generators used by games are usually pseudo-random. They have known characteristics in a period after which they'll repeat. But as long as you don't know which sequence it's settled on, it's good enough for a game. Especially as long as there are enough separate sequences to uh, make it so that you're not going to necessarily remember every single one. So, and now I figure uh, I'm going to, you know, come up with a few random four-digit numbers. And then anytime someone wants a four-digit number, I'll give them one of these pre-selected random numbers. Now, they won't actually be random, of course, because I pre-selected them according to some criteria. Uh, my random numbers are going to be 1,000, 1234, and 4242. Those will be my random numbers. 
So anytime someone asks me for a four-digit number, I'll give them 1,000, 1,234, or 4,242. None of those are actually random. I selected the 1,000 because it's the lowest four-digit number. I selected the second one because the digits are in sequence in ascending order, starting at 1. And I selected the third one because it's, uh, well, it's 42 twice. And if you don't know the significance of 42, you need to go and catch up on your Douglas Adams. Anyway. Anything that is relying on a random four-digit number, something that's going to work for any random four-digit number, must necessarily work for those three carefully selected numbers as well. Because if it's designed to work on a truly random selection of numbers, a truly random four-digit number, it will work on 1,000 just as well as it works on 7781 or 5119 or 1001 or 9999. It, it must work on all of those. If it doesn't, then you're not really looking for a random number. Now, for a lot of magic tricks and mentalism exercises and so on, you really aren't looking for a random number. You're trying to force a selection. Uh, and you're trying to force a selection according to what, whatever criteria you have. Now, if you get somebody like me that's going to insist on their own pre-selected number, well, then you're going to have to take a different tactic. Now, the great thing about a mentalism exercise or a magic trick is as long as you don't tell your marks what trick you're actually performing ahead of time, you can select a trick based on the number you're given. So you don't actually have to necessarily rely on a forced selection, but instead you select the trick based on what you're given and you therefore you can make sure the trick is going to work for any random four digit number because you have a collection of tricks that work on various subsets of those four digit numbers. So depending on your situation you know maybe you can make it work but just Make sure that you understand that 1,000 can be just as random as 5196. It can be just as random. And also remember that every single number in that range assuming that you, you don't have a memory that prevents duplication on subsequent selections, as long as every selection is independent, then the, a, the odds of any particular number coming up on that selection is always exactly the same. So if you had a 1 in 9,000 chance of getting 1,000, first time, you still have a 1 in 9,000 chance of getting 1,000 the second time. Now, it's easier to see this with a coin flip, which has, uh, assuming you have a perfect coin that can never land on its edge, and has exactly 1 in 2 odds of coming up heads or tails. So we're using a mathematically perfect coin here. then uh, you have a one in two chance that you'll get heads. And then you have a one in two chance that the next flip will be heads. 
and then a one in two chance that the next flip will be heads, and then a one in two chance that the next flip will be heads, and then a one in two chance that the next flip will be heads, and so on. Now with a coin flip, it's easy to see how you could get heads, 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 heads. There's only a 1 in 16 chance that you'll get heads, 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 heads. There's a 1 in 32 chance you'll get five heads in a row. Those aren't that bad odds, so uh, it's pretty likely if you flip the coin enough times, you're going to see a run of five heads. And a run of five tails is equally likely. Now, a run of heads, tails, heads, tails is exactly as likely as heads, 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 heads. Or tails, heads, tails, heads. Or heads, heads, tails, tails. And you can convince yourself of that by flipping the coin enough times, I'm sure. Uh, or you could just list out all the possibilities for four coin flips. And you'll see that there is exactly one case where you get four heads. And there's exactly one case where you get heads, tails, tails, tails and so on, and you'll find there's exactly 16 possible cases. So with something that has much higher probabilities, 50%, uh, you can see this uh, independence of, uh, uh, of the subsequent uh, results more clearly. Now, there's another thing that most people get wrong about randomness. And that is that for it to be truly random, uh, say, we'll use coin flips. So they, they would say that, they would, ex they would say that uh, out of 50 coin flips, there will always be 25 heads and 25 tails. No, that's wrong. There is, there is no guarantee that you'll always have 25 heads and 25 tails. And you can convince yourself of that, as you can calculate the odds of getting any particular arrangement of heads and tails. Now let's look at it on two coin flips. You've got a 25% chance of heads, heads, a 25% chance of tails, tails. And you've got a 50% chance of one of each. So heads, tails, or tails, heads. It's pretty, pretty easy to see. But you have a 50% chance that you won't get an even split. Let's look at three coin tosses. Well, you can't get an even split with three coin tosses. You're either going to get all heads, one out of eight times, all tails, one out of eight times, one heads, two tails, or two heads, one tails. Now, that those two are six-eighths of the time. Now, if you list them out, you can see uh, that the odds of each arrangement. So, well, let's look at it. We've got six possibilities, right? We can have heads, heads, tails. So that's two heads. We can have heads, tails, heads. That's two heads. Or we can have tails, heads, heads. That's two heads. So that's three possibilities with two heads. Or we can have head, tails, tails. Or 
tails, heads, tails, or tails, tails, heads. That's three possibilities with two tails. So we have one out of eight for all heads, one out of eight for all tails, three out of eight for two heads, and three out of eight for two tails. Now if we look at four, you can do a similar analysis. And again, you'll find out that there's a non-zero chance that you get something other than an even split. Now the probabilities get more interesting when you have more coin flips. You'll see more because there's more possible arrangements. With four coin flips, you can have all heads or all tails, or you can have three heads, one tails, two heads, two tails, one head, three tails. So there's five possibilities there. But again, you've got a non-zero chance of getting something other than that middle possibility of an even split. Now, as the number of flips increases, you would expect your results to approach an even split. So basically, if you could do an infinite number of coin flips, you would expect half of them to be heads and half of them to be tails. Now, of course, you can't do an infinite number of coin flips, so there's no point trying. But the more you do, the closer you will come on average to an even split. But remember, it is in fact possible to get 5,000 heads in a row. It's hugely unlikely, but it is in fact possible. That is still just as random as long as the sequence that arrived at it is a random sequence. Anyway, that's my discussion on randomness. I'm going to call it now. I've probably rambled on plenty long enough. Uh, remember to subscribe to be notified of new videos. And uh, if you've watched this far, thank you for watching.